Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Okay then, and welcome to the next video on the building a solid state Tesla coil. Now, in today's video, I'm going to be doing the gate drive circuit, or more specifically, the gate drive transformer. And I know this is something that throws a lot of people off making vacuum tube, I mean, solid state Tesla coils, because, you know, they get a ferrite core like this, wrap a bunch of wire around it, and of course, it doesn't work. So, I should know. I've been there myself. Don't know what's going on downstairs. Anyway, before we start, I was asked if I could show the schematic of the power supply that I made in the previous video. So, here it is. You can have a glance at it. I um, don't really think it needs much explaining. I mean, we've got our transformer here for the high voltage. Now, eventually, I am going to power this directly off live mains, but I thought, well, building the thing up, I would power it on lower voltages so I can see if it works or not, and then go up to the higher voltages. So eventually this transformer will be removed and the rectifier will be connected up directly to the mains. So this is the power supply for the primary circuit, and this is the power supply for the logic and the gate driver. So the logic's going to be powered off this 7805 regulator, which gives us 5 volts. The gate driver is going to be powered off 12 volts from this 7812 regulator. And this is how I've set up that transformer with both the secondaries connected together at the center to give us a center tapped output. There are the two rectifier diodes. The only other change I've made is this was originally in the original schematic that was a 100 microfarad capacitor. I've changed that to a 1000 because frankly I think a 100 would be a little bit too low for this kind of circuit. So I've used a 1000 microfarad instead so that should work a lot better. Anyway, now that's all explained, let's get on with the gate drive transformer. The first thing you've got to know about gate drive transformers is there is a lot of things that are going to affect the way it works. The kind of core you have, what kind of wire you're using, how you're winding that wire, whether you're doing this on the third moon of Saturn or whatever. There's a lot of things that affect it. So I'll just say right off that you don't want to use the cores from the coils in computer power supplies. I have made that mistake myself. These things are simply just terrible. They don't work. Instead, go to somewhere where you can get some old thrown out electronics, preferably for free, and find one of those car amplifiers, you know, one of those big metal things that's got a powerful amplifier in it. Take it apart, and inside you'll find components and lots of magic strawberry goodness. Most importantly, at least one good toroid that you can use as your gate drive transformer. This one actually has two, so don't use this one here. That one won't work, that's just like the one out of a computer power supply. So take one of these off and then take all the wire off it and you'll have a perfectly good core for your gate drive transformer. But that's only half of it though, because there's a special way that you've got to wind the wire. So anyway, first I'm going to show you the wrong ways to wind the transformer so you don't fall into the same trap that I did. And of course then I'll show you the proper way to do it. Okay, so here we have a ferrite core that I've wound. Now, this happens to be a really, really good core, but I've wound it completely incorrectly. Got my primary here, my secondary here. I know the actual gate drive transformer I'm going to use is going to have two secondaries, but for the sake of simplicity, I've just limited it to one primary and one secondary. And this is completely the wrong way in what you want to wind your transformer. I mean, this might work for something like a jewel thief or something like that, but... For a gate drive transformer. It's no use! So let's see how this actually performs. So I'll just explain the setup here. Now this little thing here is a high frequency square wave generator. I say high frequency, it can actually go down to about half a hertz and up to about 1.3 megahertz. So that's very wide range of frequencies it can produce. And of course in the middle is the transformer itself. And over on this side going to measure the output on the scope and also there is a second camera set up so we can see the scope a lot easier and of course just as always for those of you curious 
Here is the schematic of how everything's wired up. Right, okay, so let's see how this thing performs. I'm going to turn this on, and if we get a perfect square wave, or a near perfect square wave, we'll know this is a good transformer. I've also got my multimeter connected up with the frequency counter so we can see what the frequency is. So let's see what we actually get. Okay, and there we go. So right now it doesn't look too bad. I mean, we got a bit of ringing there and there, and uh, it somewhat resembles a square wave, and we're putting 44 kilohertz into this thing. But let's see what happens when I raise the frequency. Not starting to look so good now. Let's go all the way up to 1.3 megahertz. And look at that, it's now absolutely terrible. Okay, 1.4 megahertz, whatever. The reason it looks so bad, why we're getting all this ringing and all this harmonics and everything, is because of how I've wound it. So, I'm just going to stop for a minute, rewind the transformer, and you'll see what a difference it makes. Now we're back, and I've rewound the core. As you can see, I have not separated the windings. In fact, I've wound them in this sort of interlace way, so... First winding, second winding, first winding, second winding, and so on. Just because I think that looks a little neater. I know it's not covering the entire core. Ideally, you should spread the windings out so they do, but... This will still work. But, um... Let's see what we've got now. That looks better, doesn't it? Shall we turn the frequency all the way up? Yeah, why not? Alright, let's go all the way up. And now look at it. It resembles a square wave much better. I think you should also bear in mind that the output of this square wave generator I've made is not exactly perfect. Just for comparison, this is the output directly from my square wave generator. Just to show you that some of that distortion there is not the transformer contributing to that. That's actually how the output of this thing is, and there's not much I can do about that. Maybe if I'd have used better output transistors more suited for the high frequencies than the 2N3904 and a 2N3906, it might work a little better than it does, but it's still good enough for the tests. So you can see that worked quite well. However, that's still not the right way to wind a gate drive transformer, so now I'm going to do it the proper way. Alright, so let's wind the transformer. So we've got a core, right here. And we've got some wire. And we've got a moth, which I will have to kill later on. But let's get this transformer wound. Fucking moths. I've got my vice on my bench now. And I'm going to wind the wire onto the core in a trifler style. I don't know if, it's, if star's the right word to use, but um, this will all make sense in a minute. So I've got one end of the three wires in my vise, and the other end in the chuck of this hand drill. You don't have to use a hand drill, you can use a power drill if you wish, but I'm going for more control here. So all we'll do now is use the drill to twist the wires together. Of course, with pulling the wires nice and tightly first, And there we are, some nice trifler wire. Now I just got to wind this onto the core. So one of these wires is going to be our primary, one of them is going to be one of the secondaries, and the other wire is going to be the other secondary. So now I've got the gate drive transformer made. Not a bad piece of work if I do say so myself. Of course when you wind this, you want to make sure that you spread your windings out nice and evenly. It'll just make it work that extra bit better. I should have really colour coded these wires better because um, I've got two of these white wires and one green wire so I don't know which is which but we can use say the green wire as the primary and these white wires to drive our gates of course I'll have to find out which wire is which but it doesn't really matter which wire we use for what purpose because all three wires are the same so I've got 15 turns approximately 15 turns on this core so now Let's wire this up and see if it works. 
Okay, well, here we are. We've got the transformer hooked up, and uh, I wouldn't say that's working too badly at all. Because you've got to remember, this thing has a little bit of distortion itself, so uh, I think that's contributing to the distortion in the waveform more than anything else. So there we go, that's the output from the square wave oscillator, and as you can see, it's pretty much exactly the same as, uh, well, what we were getting when we put it through this, so that's actually looking pretty good. Right, okay, so now what I'm going to do is a little bit of a frequency sweep. I've had to put my meter at a weird angle like this because it's, uh, well, if I try to put it at a more suitable angle, we get glare, so I have to put it like that. And also... Connecting the meter up to this makes the distortion slightly worse, as you can expect. Well, let's lower the frequency and see how well it works. Right now we're at 1.4 megahertz, which is the very limit of what this circuit can do. So let's go down. Let's take it down. Okay, 1 megahertz. Actually, let's see how far down we can go before this starts looking like, well, not like a square wave. Okay, still looking good. We're at 208 kilohertz. Okay, we're at 32 kilohertz now, and it's still looking rather good. Although I think... That might be right on the limit of where of how low we can go. Okay, we're at 58 kilohertz. Now I wonder if we go down really low, if we'll hear the sound from the coils or not. Oh yeah. Right, four kilohertz, and we might be able to hear that now. Just a little bit of fun there. So yeah, I'd say anything from about 50 kilohertz onwards seems to work really well. And of course, no Tesla coil ever runs down at that frequency, so uh... I'm gonna say, all in all, that's a successful transformer. And now to show you just how crappy those cores out of computer power supplies can be, I've gone and wound a transformer using the same kind of wire, same amount of turns, but this time using the core out of a computer power supply. And you can see right away that it's terrible. There's already, amongst the noise, a little bit of ramping. And this is at 1.3 megahertz, so let's turn it down to, say, 200 kilohertz. If you remember, that was perfectly okay with the other transformer. With the other core, let's go down to 200 kilohertz. Adjust the time base. And look at that. It's absolutely terrible. Does not resemble a square wave at all. So, back to the good transformer. Okay, that's enough impressions of how I sound in my YouTube videos. How the echo of my room makes my voice sound when I'm using a microphone that's not in close proximity to my mouth. So anyway, back to the good transformer. And I wonder what this will do if I connect this transformer directly up to the chip's output. I know we should do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Right, okay, so I've got this disconnected. Now I'm just going to connect this directly to the chip's output. Still through the one microfarad ceramic capacitor, obviously. Let's see what we get. So I'm just curious. Okay, that's ramping a little bit. I think that might be a little bit too much load for the chip. But, let's see what we get if we go all the way up. All the way up to 1.4 megahertz. You know, that looks really, really good. 
Yeah, I'm quite happy with that, and I'm sure the output of the other side will be just as good as well. Okay, you got to check this out. This is outputting the perfect waveform now. I've just connected both channels to my scope. And when I connect this up to the chip's output, take a look. Just look at that. It's perfect. It's beautiful. It's no use. Such beauty has never been beheld before. It's so beautiful I think I might cry. Not really, of course. I'm just joking. Oh, but that is just working wonderfully. So there we go. There's our gate drive transformer. Better unplug that before it loads down the chip too much. Although, I really don't think the load that this presents and the load that the scope presents is going to be too much of a load anyway. But anyway, there we are. We've got our gate drive transformer. So in the next video, we're going to be working on the gate drive circuit itself. And from me, until next time, goodbye.